hello everyone and welcome to another episode of relative pitch oh my gosh hi hello hi. we're hi. here we're like in the same room with each other that never happened never. but like besides that we have an amazing amazing guest with us here today shantanique moore who is shantanique moore we're gonna find out today <laughs> we are so excited that first of all be together in this space together but then to have an amazing guest on with us today shantanique thank you so much for being here with us today how are you doing Thank you so much for asking me to join. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. I wish I could be in the room, though. Like, I feel like I'm missing out. (laughs) Where where are you guys? We're in Georgia. Uh, Yeah, and I'm in, like, snowy Metro Detroit, Michigan right now. Business family, but... Michael wants that. I love this. So maybe you can trade. I love this. Right. I wish... But I will say, like, right now, Georgia is giving that northern type of feel. It's, like, cloudy. It's rainy. It's cold. Really? It's, cold. it's not. It is. It's cold. It's, don't tell me cold. No, no, no. It's not cold. They don't understand. I know. They don't understand. They hold don't, they don't get it. Y'all kneecaps aren't as cold as mine. <laughs> okay? My kneecaps are cold. That should not be cold. That's, tr- that's true. That's true. That's <laughs> true. Maybe, maybe it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> But so how how are you, you know, you're you're there, but you're located in, in Memphis, right? Yeah, yeah. So I moved to Memphis uh, at the end of August to um, work with the Memphis Symphony Orchestra. I started with them this season as their acting principal flutist, which is super duper exciting. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Flutist. So here for the flutist. <laughs> I know, reunite. <laughs> Gosh, that is just so fabulous. I mean, having another flutist here, but you just have such a rich history of what you have been doing. And it was so funny because right before we started, I even was like, what do you even want me to say? Like, what are you like, who are you? And we just decided to say, we're going to find out as we Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I mean, like for for those of us who are still learning, you know, audience members who maybe this is their first uh, time engaging or encountering your work. I mean, what should we know about where did you start? Like, what's been a part of the process? We just want to know more about your journey. Sure, sure. So most of my work has actually been in the orchestral realm. Um, I started um, this career path as a high schooler with the Detroit Symphony Youth Ensembles. So I started like my uh, youth orchestra uh, career down in Detroit with the orchestra there. And that, I mean, truly shaped my path and also like kind of made me decide what I wanted to do because I was into medicine. I wanted to go into medicine. I wanted to be a doctor. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, girl, are you going to stay up all night studying medicine and practice? Nah. Yeah. So what, 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 <laughs> not going to happen. So I could not see myself not making music. Mm-hmm. So that's how that, um, that's how I made that choice. Um, So, yeah, I grew up in Redford Township, Michigan, which is a small town right outside of the city of Detroit. And um, I went to Wayne State University for both of my undergrad and graduate degrees, where I studied undergrad with Laura Larson of the now Detroit Opera. It used to be called the Michigan Opera. Um, And then Sharon Sparrow of the Detroit Symphony Orchestra for my master's degree. Mm. And then after that, I did um, well. During that and after, I did quite a bit of freelancing work around Metro Detroit, um, some work in Indiana, um, Ohio. Like I started to kind of like branch out. Mm-hmm. But um, around like 2018, 19, the Sphinx organization introduced uh, SOPA, which is the Sphinx Orchestral Partners. So, uh oh. I can't remember what the A stands for. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, oh, audition. It's an audition. Yes, that's what the A stands for, duh. Um, and what that, that really opened up a lot of things for me because it was an audition before several orchestras to be placed on their sub lists, um, to be, to be potentially placed um, like higher up in auditions and things like that, like access to things that I didn't even know about orchestras I had no idea even existed so that opened up a lot of opportunities then I started subbing elsewhere like around the country um in 2019 I was offered the fellowship with the Pittsburgh Symphony which was mind-blowing life-changing everything like that orchestra holds like it's got a special place in my heart like the musicians there are so amazing amazing people amazing artists like that was like 
transformational for me. Um, and then upon finishing that fellowship, I won the Detroit Symphony Fellowship, which was like a full circle moment, like yeah. going from youth orchestra to being a fellow and playing a, as colleagues with people that I used to look up to as a kid, like even Sharon Sparrow. Like, I'm like, you're always going to be my teacher. She's like, no, girl, I'm your colleague now. I'm like, nah, <laughs> like you are always going to be my teacher. Like, I'm always going to look up to you. So that was a full circle moment. And then this year I was offered the position with Memphis. So now I'm doing the real thing um, and have my own title as acting principal flutist with the Memphis Symphony. Oh my God. Wow. We love it. Wow. Thanks. That's just so beautiful. The, the idea of a full circle moment, um, because it, it happens so, I well, I feel like it doesn't happen often enough, but people like would want that to happen more. It's this place that you... Yeah go through your education, you go through a lot of like moments of development and to be able to come back to it as an adult and be like, I am, I'm here now. These are my colleagues. They used to be like mentors, as you're saying, mm -hmm. maybe for a long time or maybe forever, they still will be to you. Always. Yeah. But, like, no, we're colleagues. Like we're at the same level now. Which yeah. Is so fabulous. I mean, wow. I know it was weird though. Um, <laughs> because I mean, it, when you go through college and especially like a grad degree or something after your two years or your three years, if you're going for doctorate, those are truly now your colleagues. And you're like, no, mm -hmm. you will never be my teacher. Mm -hmm. When you sat next to some of your, your mentors and, and you, you played with them for the first time, how was that experience? Uh, surreal. Like it felt like I actually had to like not really pinch myself, but I had to be like, wake up. Like, are, are you dreaming? Like, is this real life right now? Um, but it was, it was hard for me to switch out of like student mode because I'd been her student, you know, for so many years to being like, okay, I belong here. I auditioned, you know, I, this is a spot that I am qualified for. So that took a while, like by the end of my first year, I only did one year with Detroit um, because I was offered Memphis. But by the end of the year, I was like, OK, I can do this. But it yeah. took a minute. It took a minute. Yeah. Mm. What did you have to tell yourself? You know, like, was I was like, I belong here. Was there anything else you were just like, girl, get it, get it together. We, we plan. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? It it took a lot of mindfulness practice. So like meditation and like just quieting the mind a lot because that inner chatter, like, I mean, I, as a lot of us do, like we, um, we deal with like imposter syndrome or like, you know, just kind of like not feeling like we deserve to be somewhere or that we're ready. Like we're not ready to be somewhere. Um, so it took a lot of meditation and just positive affirmations, positive self-talk saying like, you know, this, you know what you're doing. Like you've studied, you belong here. Um, and then like the times where I felt like, you know, maybe I didn't quite reach the mark of their level. It's like, okay, well, what can I do to get a little bit closer? So I was always like, like sometimes I would feel defeated, but then, you know, it's like, okay, knock yourself, get your, pick yourself back up and then go to the practice room figure out what you need to do just to make yourself a little bit better. So each time I was in rehearsal or performance, I felt more comfortable and confident in being there. I can uh, relate to you with that because like after uh, we all met <clears throat> at KSU mm -hmm. and then we all went across the country, we said, okay, we love each other. Bye. <laughs> so that's when I went up for <laughs> two years. And then when I returned back to Atlanta, a lot of my teachers, even from high school are still freelance players in Atlanta. So mm -hmm. like having to come back and be like, are they going to treat me as a student? What do I need to do? Mm -hmm. Like, I am no longer your student. Like, I love you. You are my teacher, but we're colleagues. I'm going to need you to hook me up with them gigs so I can pay my gas bill. Like, okay. Yes. <laughs> so I, I just relate a lot because I had to really talk to myself when I ended up on gigs with these people. It's just like, I know that I can do the things. They're not going to lean over and be like, hey, have you remembered to do this, this, this? And I don't have to go to them seeking advice all the time. Or like, hey, am I doing this right? There's a reason I got called for the gig. We're doing the gig together. Yes. But yes. It's, I feel like it's a hard mindset change for some people to go back to either where they were and for where they were and they see their teachers and be like, oh, can I play with my teacher as a colleague? Is this allowed? Yes. And yes. I think it from like resonated from you. Like we are all belong where we're supposed to be. There's a reason we are at that moment at that time. It just needs to be a thing. Yes. I agree with you. I agree with you. 
like accepting your accepting your path on your journey like everyone's path is different and I mean like I feel like somebody who went to Wayne State University that's not a well-known music school for, for at least not for classical music performance right um you know playing with people who've gone to Juilliard playing with people who've gone in like these amazing conservatories feeling like you know what I belong here too even my like my teacher she went to Juilliard she went to Manus like these amazing schools and I'm just like yeah you know I went to Wayne State okay yeah I went to Wayne State but here I am too like I'm sitting up on the stage playing yeah you know you put Absolutely. in that work when you put in that work when you, when you put in the work yeah it don't matter what the degree no one no one can deny you right. work is good yep exactly and that's that hard work pays off it, it mm-hmm. does mm-hmm. and it's something yeah. Three of us have talked about a lot because, again, we went to Kennesaw State University in Georgia. And usually when people know Georgia, they know maybe like University of Georgia. Um, they may know, go dogs. Um, <laughs> they may know, <laughs> but like, like Kennesaw was, for me, I remember when I was in high school and I was trying to figure out where to go. My, I remember my my high school band director literally, literally looking in my face and saying, do you want to be an orchestral player? Then you're going to go study mm-hmm. Flute of the Atlanta Symphony and she is here <laughs> so you go there mm-hmm. and that for me that's just what the truth yeah. was like it doesn't he didn't care about the name of the school he didn't care about any of that he said yeah. this is where this person is so I feel like from that moment for me it was always about who they were who am who am I going to be entrusting to like be the next person I who molds helps mold me helps pour into me and create you know who am I going to be next so it's like the school, the university, ha- it does have something to do with that, right? Yeah. Because it is a culture. We talk a lot about culture and community. Oh, yeah. Really, like when I go into it, I'm thinking, can I study with this person for what, four to one year, depending on what your program is? And mm-hmm. we, I feel like because we went to a school that same, it's not a Juilliard, it's not a conservatory, mm-hmm. it's not a place, a place that everyone knows like Curtis, but we know mm-hmm. that we've got same, like the skills that put us at the same level yes, <laughs> as these absolutely. people. So yeah. we're and, there, we're and there. Have the, yeah, or exactly. of course the price. Like right. people don't, I don't think people take into <laughs> to, to uh, consideration. Go right. where the money's at. Go where the money, <laughs> like go where the money's at. And where, like you were saying, Lauren, like go where you will get that education based upon people who actually are doing the thing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Doing exactly. Not just because of the name of the school. That's, exactly. yes. Yes, yes. Doing the thing. Well, you know, on the money part of people, especially people from a minority status, our parents did not have money to send us nope. to Curtis, to no. Manus, to all of the, especially out of state. Like the good thing about Georgia, mm. we have the Zell Miller, a whole scholarship yeah. that, you know, if you go to a school that's in state, you know, the, the state of Georgia will pay for it or pay through for tuition. Oh. Yeah. So it's like, well, obviously I'm not about to go out of state. There were schools when I was saying undergrad where I was like, you know, I, I could go there. You could get in. Yeah. It wasn't about. Quality. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But my parents are two working uh, class parents that, you know, they did the best for me, but also for the pocket mm-hmm. sake. And I have younger siblings. Right. So therefore mm-hmm. this is the best option. And I don't think a lot of people talk about that mm-hmm. when it comes to choosing your university uh, mm-hmm. want to set you up for greatness in that way. Yeah. You know what? That's huge. And another thing, like, I feel like, within the black community, like a lot of parents don't know what's what, you know, like, yep. like my family didn't know anything about classical music until I was like, I want to join fifth grade bands. And then my mom was like, Oh, well, let's look into this a little bit more. And that's how she, you know, and thank God that she was the type of parent that was like, I'm going to look into this. I'm going to invest in this. I'm going to do that. And thank God she had the means to do so. Right. Um, but just that, awareness of like what is classical music that's not like just that's not for us like what do you mean right right Mm -hmm. you know and and that's huge money like it costs so much money it's such an investment to go into classical music and it's not even just because people will say like for like curtis they'll be like oh well it's like a full ride right okay but rent Mm -hmm. the cost of living there can you afford to eat like food while you're there like there's so many things besides like 
that's the tuition cost that goes into can you afford to be at this institution right. that people don't talk about enough, you know? Right. Um, so well, what I, I mean, I wanted to go back to, because I you talked about DSO, you talked about Sphinx. And those are two, uh -huh. I really want to talk about that because um, okay. currently what, the work I do with the Seattle Symphony within their education and community. Love Seattle Symphony, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> go Seattle. <laughs> Seattle. Oh, always on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> But we were just talking mm. to um, some colleagues at DSO in their education department. I mean, you know, we were just trading back and forth ideas. They're asking, like, what, are you, you know, what are you guys doing within specifically the Seattle community? And we're more interested in knowing, like, what in Detroit, when you have such a rich culture and community, what are you really doing within the, especially education and community engagement department mm -hmm. to make sure you're really connecting with students, like for, with identity and all those things. And that was something for us that we, we just had no idea was actually happening there. And I wanted to know, because you, that is, that's your home, right? That is where you are. Like, this is what I grew up in. Can yes. you speak a little bit to, a, to your experience with that? I mean, obviously you had such a rich musical, like, like experience with them, but I wanted to know more about the culture aspect and what they really did to make sure that identity wise that you felt seen, mm -hmm. whether it was by other students who maybe looked like you conductors, question mark, who looks like question you. Mark. Yeah. <laughs> question mark. I love that. So are we talking in fellowship or are we talking, are we talking when I was in civic, like the youth ensemble or are we talking? All of it. I mean, all of it, especially in your like the young development stages for okay. you. Okay. Really yeah. Oh, okay. That's excellent. So, when I was in youth orchestra, like I said, I didn't grow up in the city, so I did not. Um, I didn't have any experience with the Detroit Symphony outside of my youth or like going down to Detroit right. every Saturday or every Wednesday for rehearsal. Right. So I didn't know anything about it. Mm. Um. But then fast forward when I became a freelancer and I, I was a teaching artist for a little bit for, with Detroit Symphony too. How did I forget about that? Yeah, I was like a teaching artist and I would go into some of the Detroit schools and um, work with the students. And, you know, I, I, I see that Detroit tries to, like the orchestra really tries to connect in a way that just is like, hey, here we are, mm. you know, like, I think that's huge. Like, even if, even if you don't see, even if they send like three white people to a predominantly black school, it's still just like, okay, here we are. Here's an avenue. Here's something that is, that could interest you, you know, just to see it is amazing. But I think with their fellowship program, um, they have been able to make it so like they'll put the fellows in front of these young students. And then you see the representation, which is, so important. Yeah. Like if you don't, I mean, yeah, you could put three white people in front of a hundred black kids and they'll be like, oh, that's cool. Oh, what kind of instrument is that? Like, that's awesome. But then if you see a black person or someone that looks like you playing that instrument, it's even more intriguing, even more interesting. So that's what I noticed, like a shift from when I was in high school. So that was like 2000, what, 2007 through nine, maybe. And then um, more recent years, just like with the fellows going into schools, myself included, um, the concerts, things like that. Like they're, they're trying, like, yeah. yeah, I mean, they're really trying it down here in Detroit. And we can tell, like, I mean, mm -hmm. from all the, the orchestras who have been on our radar and I would have to say that maybe Sphinx being in that, in that area, like in Detroit has helped that, or actually has helped nurture that relationship. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, honestly, I mean, I, I, I can't speak. To, I'm not sure because I feel like Sphinx is separate. Sphinx is, is even though it's in Detroit, it's not like a Detroit based right. on the ground mm -hmm. fighting right. for Detroit organization. Yeah. I see um, see but like Detroit Symphony has Detroit Harmony, which Damien Crutcher, if you don't know about Damien Crutcher, you should get to know him. Mm. Yeah, get to know Damien Crutcher. He is amazing. Okay. Um, he wants to make sure that kids that that any kid that wants to play music can that they can get an instrument in their hands. Mm. They don't got to pay for it, you know. Wow. Lessons. Yeah, look look into Damien. Yes. Um, yeah. So I mean, there's organ. So Det Detroit Harmony, I think, is 
teamed up with or a part of the Detroit Symphony. Mm-hmm. And there's also Crescendo Detroit, which is, I think that is Damien's group. Like he's founded that one. Oh, wow. So yeah, I, Sphinx, I think is more national, but just yeah. born here in Detroit. I see. Got it. I see. Yeah. Can you um, just talk about for anyone, because we have a lot of um, undergraduate students uh, and high schoolers that are, are listening. And um, can you talk about fellowship and what is it and what comes with uh, the fellowship title and being a fellow? Mm. And the process to get there. And the process. Yeah. Okay. Fellowships are very helpful and beneficial to us as musicians. Um, Especially if we don't come from the strongest or most prestigious, rigorous musical education pipeline system. Why? Because you get hands-on real life experience playing with great orchestras. Um, With that being said though, it is highly competitive to get the spots. Um, So you do have to really like grind and, and be on your orchestral excerpt game and like really be like striving for that level. Like when I won, I, oh my gosh, I think I applied for the Detroit Symphony Fellowship three times, two or three times. The first time was a no. <laughs> the second time was I would made it to finals and the third time I won. Wow. Mm-hmm. So the Detroit Symphony one especially is very, very tough to get. Um, and then it's just, it's just like you, you just have to really be on that path. Like, um, you know, no lolly dollying around, just like, this is what I'm going to do. And just really going, taking auditions and things like that. The fellowships have been beneficial for me in that, um, again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about just having that confidence on stage of people that you've looked up to, you know, because the more that you play, the more that you do the thing, the more confident you become. And so when you win a job, or, you know, you feel more confident. Like I, I really do belong here because I've played with people in the, I've played with people in the Detroit Symphony. I've played with people in the Pittsburgh Symphony, you know? Um, so it's just a really a good confidence builder. You get access to like, you know, you can learn rep that maybe you didn't learn in college. Like for me, like I am learning, even on this new job in Memphis, like I'm learning everything. <laughs> like it's my first time playing a lot of things. Um, because we didn't really play stuff at Wayne State. Right. Right. So um, I just think my advice would be to high schoolers or undergraduate students or grad students, like anybody that's interested in fellowship programs would be to just really get familiar with your excerpts and start doing like mock auditions for people, for your recording device, for things like take it seriously, like take these fellowship auditions Seriously, as if they are a true position in the orchestra. No, go for and it. don't be afraid to make and don't be afraid to make mistakes within your fellowship because it is educational. It is. Right. So it's like you you get that you get that professional experience, but it's like I am a fellow, yo. You know, like yeah. so yeah. I like, give me feedback, like help me out. Like right. yeah. I just I just want to like uh uh okay. I have a couple of things. <laughs> um one is I think it's really uh, important that you said, like treat these like real auditions Mm -hmm. because I've seen people in like in, when they're in school, go to auditions and they treat it like chair placements or they treat it like auditions in the school of music, which is different. We're not looking well, like the orchestras are not looking for potential. They're looking if I can put you in the job tomorrow and you won't mess up. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so like, it's a huge difference in a cycle like a lot. And this is where I think some music schools fail. It's a psychological difference. When you go to go for that audition, it's like, go to win or go to advance. Like you're not mm-hmm. going, oh, this would be a great experience. Like I even mm-hmm. had to keep myself out of that. Mm-hmm. It's like, why am I going to take the time? Put in all this effort and, money. and be like- And this- money, Woo. Money, money and then be like this was fun <laughs> like yeah, yeah. you just can't yeah. you can't do that anymore and then also <laughs> on the other side because you've you've played with like pittsburgh symphony and the detroit symphony and now the memphis symphony i'm a little old down here in a little chattanooga symphony um and i had you know, 
a wonderful right. opportunity to sub with the Atlanta Symphony this past year. Mm-hmm. It's just like there's such a difference sitting in that ensemble, sitting in that like top tier ensemble. Instead of listening to them, you feel like what your the goal is. You hear side by side. And it's like also my biggest thing is like when you're in school, it's like always these intonation issues. Then you sit next to people and be like, oh, it's like crystal clear. It yeah. is. <laughs> and it's also crystal clear when you incorrect. It's like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. The difference is like you need to go and do the things. But also when you get there, be very hyper aware of what's going on around you to mm-hmm. know that you might either have to go up to or mm-hmm. know the arc that we're striving for. So I just want to like uh, say that some things resonated with me, but also like put out there for the younger students and for the people who are in the professional world. Auditions don't are not looking for potential. Yeah, the that's, that's you good. For yeah. you to unlock, like you yeah. have to unlock mm-hmm. your potential. But when you get there, mm-hmm. it's just like, do we want show you? up and show out? Mm-hmm. That's it. Every day and every show up and show out. Um, yeah. and so also for for anybody that's thinking about a fellowship. So in your year of being a fellow what was your day-to-day like were you in ensemble did you have outside duties you know did you have lessons did you not like what was the what comes with that so each fellowship program is a little bit different Mm -hmm. um and so i was in fellow in pittsburgh and in detroit so the the fellowship program in pittsburgh has changed since i first joined since i first joined so and then i was there during the pandemic too so that messed up the experience but essentially all fellowship programs offer an opportunity where you get regular lessons you don't have to pay for them (laughs) hello like amazing um they offer assistance for you to get to and from auditions talk about that money how expensive it is to pay right um airfare lodging like everything um mock auditions on the stage of where like detroit symphony orchestra hall heinz hall in pittsburgh um, so you, because that's one of the most frightening things as you walk to these walk into these auditions and you're on these humongous hall stages mm-hmm. and you're like, whoa, like it does. It feels way different than your practice room. It feels way different than your, your apartment. Right. So you get the experience of like actually doing the thing for people who are kind of like, I want to see you do well, you know, Um yeah. And then um, there's also like educational things. You might go to do outreach concerts, um, teach lessons, things like that. I mean, I feel like the, the, or- the organizations that hold that have fellowships, they do everything that they can to kind of like show that we have a brown person on stage. So, yeah, that's the thing, too. Now, to go with a back and piggyback, Anthony, how many subscription concerts did you play on okay so in detroit i had um i think it was requirement of 18 weeks okay that's that's quite a bit Mm -hmm. now it's again it's different for every yeah yeah, orchestra Mm -hmm. but um yeah it depends it depends but i think in detroit i was playing on real not just pop you know like i was playing classics i was playing stuff like that i was getting real nervous (laughs) yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I really want to talk about with fellowships, the, the truth, especially of fellowships that are for people of color, um, especially by organizations and institutions that are have been predominantly white led, white centric. And um, this is something that I think, especially during and post pandemic, we've been seeing pop up more. Um, and for, for I know Detroit has had a very long history, same for like Atlanta Symphony's t- talent development program. There are like organizations and programs that have been around for 30 plus, you know, 50 plus years. But we're seeing a lot of new ones pop up that speaks a little bit to what you're saying, this idea of just having a per- like a, that, that face, that color. I have a little token. Yes, I got my little token. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And it's, I hope I don't get banned for, or what is it blacklisted for saying that? But no, because it's, it's true. I mean, it's we, true. We said worse things, and I'm going to say it again right mm-hmm. now. <laughs> like, I have been asked and involved in fellowship programs and other way, many other like donor events, all these different things that have really, child. <laughs> right. <You> know, <laughs> Especially the donor <laughs> events. <laughs> I'm sorry. You triggered me right Just in and there. 
literally this. They yes. want me there to show or like, especially, you know, depends yeah. on how my hair is that day. You know, it's just really, it's crazy because I, I like to talk about the opportunities and what you're talking to are how amazing the opportunities of the lessons of the, you know, the financial yeah. help for all those things, which is the beauty and the purpose of those fellowships. Mm -hmm. And then there's mm -hmm. the ugly truth that they slide in there that they just mm -hmm. hope that it outweighs or the the good outweighs this other part of it where they do kind of want to parade you around they kind of do want to use your face your likeness for their own gain especially for their gain mm -hmm. wise mm -hmm. you know yeah. development wise and i would what i would say to like other people who are like well if you knew that or you you know you saw that i was happening what did you do? Like, how did you, how, how did you, you know, handle or manage being in a position where you are gaining some things for yourself, but you also know that they're using you. And what I will have to say to that is whenever there are opportunities that you really do feel uncomfortable, like say no, like just say no, yeah. say, I really feel comfortable talking to that donor or this person. Yeah. I've had horror stories from my friends who've had to lead donors around for talks and tours and have been said the craziest things that their hair being touched yeah. all this crazy stuff oh you yeah, never yeah, yeah. have to put yourself in a position that you feel yeah. uncomfortable like that is number one i will say yeah. over the lessons over the opportunities i'm over, happy you said that i'm happy yeah, you said that absolutely because it happens and it's something that i've been really i've tried to be very clear when i tell people i did do this program I would not recommend it to you though. And I will tell you exactly why. I'm not saying I didn't benefit from it in a certain way, but I will say that I don't, I could not put myself back through this just to get what I got out of it. Yes. You know? And that's huge. And I think, I think some programs are better than others in terms of what you actually get out of it. And it won't leave you feeling depleted or leave you feeling nasty or, you know, like less than, um, I, I am the type of person where like, I am going to take like whatever situation I find myself in, I'm the type of person that I'm going to milk it for what I can get out of it. Um, but if there's, but if there's something that's just like, no, I'm out of there. Like, I'm just not going to stand up for that. And I think that we need to be okay with and comfortable with saying, no, I'm not, I'm not okay with this. Um, and just not doing it. Yes. You know what I mean? Because I think that's how I think that's one of the ways in which we're going to move forward and we're going to be taken more seriously. Like, I'm not just your puppet. I'm not just your like your token. Like, I am a human being mm. just like you are. And I want to be here and I'm qualified to be here. Yes. Mm -hmm. it is. And I have something yeah. to say. Like, uh, exactly. I think uh -huh. times we as people of color, black people, we get into these um to these roles and it is just like oh well the job is done you're hired you're here and we can put your picture on, on the website and right. we were talking last night about how our image has so much value it does especially yeah. to these organizations and uh i know for me i've been thinking about that in the past two three years i'm like you know what i'm not going to let these people use my image for their monetary value and I'm getting nothing of it. So just as you said, I, we are exchanging something. Yeah. It's an exchange. It's definitely, it should be an equal exchange. At least I should yeah. feel like it's an equal exchange, exactly. you know, because I might not be getting the millions of dollars of donations, right? Mm -hmm. but at least I can move forward in some type of way. And Absolutely. it my life has changed in a positive way. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Because, I mean, I feel like these organizations do that quite a lot. And uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm not going to be here if I feel like I'm not getting something from this. So uh, I'm very, I'm y'all know, I will say no and goodbye. Let me, let me go ahead and pack my <laughs> I'm going to get my stuff together and I'm going to walk real loud. I, real loud. I'm still, okay? Like, like I, yep, bye. And, and, and goodbye. And, and for anybody that is listening, I think there has to be some type of self-discovery and some self-awareness of your value. Like, yes. what Ooh, that's I, a word. What's mine? who am I? I know that I'm this person and I know I bring this to the table. And if I'm not uh, feeling like I'm valued, I know somebody who will. Like, I know there will be other places. You are preaching louder than we are shouting, okay? 
<laughs> I was very moved and I just it okay. had to come out today. It really did. Absolutely. But and I'm sure you you have had those moments where you're like, look now, my value is something higher, and this is what what uh I'm gonna do about it, especially in some of those in those programs like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's more widespread now. And I and like you said, since the pandemic. Like everybody's like, okay, well, we gotta get these black people on stage. We gotta program the black composers. We gotta do this. We gotta do that. So I feel like you have to like use discernment. Like, where am I actually being valued, and where am I actually just being a, a, a pet for for these people, a, a zoo animal, you know? Um, and the thing too is like money. Like I feel like everybody wants to get money, so we're so quick to accept things. Yes. Yeah. And that is hard to be like, no, nah, I'm not going to accept this because I don't feel right about it. Right. I'm not sure that, um, I mean, I don't think I've, I don't think I have personally been in any situations that Charles trying to think that have been bad, you know, where, that I've actually felt uncomfortable and like, um, because I, I just wouldn't do it. I'm with you. Like, I, I just would not do it. I just be like, yeah, thanks, but no, thank you. You know, something my parents always told me, not all money is good money. Right. Yeah. So, and, and if it's not good money, you, if you accept that, it's going to come with terms and conditions. You know, yeah. when, you, when you sign up for something, you got to click the terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. Who knows what's in them, them 1,100 paragraphs? Right, because we don't read the mugs. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> we own all of us. Honey. I'm sure. I'm, I'm <laughs> told, look, I don't know what's in the terms and conditions, <laughs> but just know that when it's time for you to repay your debt, it's in the, it's in the sixth paragraph, yeah. line B. And, see, you didn't read it. So, but you <clears throat> signed your name on the dotted line. Yeah. Um, and for anybody uh, of younger and, and older and anybody, we have to make sure that we understand mm -hmm. what we're getting into. Mm -hmm. Protect yourself. Yes. Protect yes. Yourself. yes. And when you're signing on to that scholarship, fellowship program, whatever you're doing, ask multiple people to read it for you. When I've signed my job, Ooh, good I advice. send it to my mom, my mentors, friends, mm -hmm. and I get them to go through it. I'm saying, do you see anything that it's, I need to like highlight or bring up before I sign this? Because you never know what someone could catch that you mm -hmm. would have just passed right over. So mm -hmm. especially Ooh. as you're young, ask for help. You know, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. And yeah. check, I'm learning, like the more I, the more I get to know people and the more traveling I do, like I'm hearing about different programs and I'm not going to necessarily say any names, but just like the reputation of the programs, whether or not they pay on time, like don't play about your money. Don't play right. about your money. If I'm showing up, if I'm ready, I'm prepared and all this kind of stuff, I expect to have my money when you tell me right. that you're going to pay it out. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's some, so, like, so, so don't i mean be excited and thankful for opportunities but also do your research also know what you're signing yourself up for mm -hmm. yeah and always like take take opportunities for what they are opportunities opportunities yeah. you are offered something and i'm learn i'm still learning this just because you are offered something does that mean you have to take it and there are there, but you can have so many. That's the whole, that is what the point of an opportunity is. Yeah. Is it right for you? you? Is it right for them? Is it right for you right now? Maybe like everything is right except for this one thing. Like take time, but be excited. The whole thing is I, what I don't want. Be grateful. And be grateful that you have those opportunities. But then while being grateful, while being excited, also say, okay, now let me be like realistic for a moment, yes. you know, as well. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um. So, I know we've talked about all this stuff. How have you liked Memphis? How does it feel in your new job? How does it feel like you are the acting principal? Yes. Yes. Well, first of all, I love that because um, I've always wanted to be a principal flutist of an orchestra. Like, I've always felt the most comfortable in that role. And um, it's just, it feels, it feels good. Um, so, I'm super duper excited about that. Super duper thankful for this opportunity. Um, and it's amazing. Like I said earlier, like I'm learning a lot of music that I've never played before. I'm learning that it's like, like shifting from that fellowship kind of like, oh yeah, help me, help me kind of roll to like, I'm the leader now. I have to speak up. I have to 
you know, lead. <laughs> I can't hide, like, um, which is fine. Like I, like I said, like I feel like this is where I'm supposed to be in this role within an orchestra. Um, Memphis, though, the city. Mm -mm. Yeah. Nope. And and I'm from Detroit, babe. Like I'm from Detroit. <laughs> It's it's different down there. It's it's yeah. different. Do, do do you live in, within the perimeter of Memphis? I live in Memphis. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> 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 oh wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was the worst one. He said, "Oh wow." I just said, oh. "I know that." Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay. Just on the nuts and bolts thing is people who are wanting to get in orchestras and wanting to do these things, they don't understand how rehearsals and performances go sometimes. How many rehearsals do you have for, let's say, your subscription, your masterwork concerts, mm -hmm. and then how many rehearsals and how long are they? Oh, okay. So typically for masterworks, we will have four rehearsals and they last like two and a half hours each. And then we'll have like two or three concerts. Mm -hmm. That's okay. like one week. And then um, for pops or like um, different, like smaller shows, I say smaller, even though music tends to still be super hard. Yeah. So it's not really smaller. It's just uh, not masterworks. Yeah. Um, one rehearsal. Yeah. One See, rehearsal, maybe two rehearsals. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See if you're lucky. Tell me why. If you're lucky. And this goes to another thing because I'm like, I just, I got my job in May. I won the audition. So I started in August. Oh, congrats. Thank you. Near the same time as you. Right. And so, like, I didn't know we had four two and a half hour rehearsals, and we about to put on this little chair, Sadie. Um, like, we, we, we about to put this thing on. And Not sure, and Sadie. But like, when it came to the pops, I said, because you know they be loading them up with music, like the John Williams. Like, why it's, twelve pieces? John Williams is so hard. Like, <laughs> we need fifty it's rehearsals. On this. They're like twelve pieces. I want. And I'm like, yeah. Says who? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. I said, y'all, why y'all give Shahrazad like, like that many hours? But you gonna give this John Williams that is harder. No offense. So yeah. Rehearsal. Yeah. Y'all yeah. get some. Y'all but serving serve up clams on this on this <laughs> on this concert stage. Please. But no, it's just like mm. I am, I, and um, and you know, like for us and for everybody reading over your CBA, your collecting bargaining collective bargaining agreement is mm -hmm. so important but i feel like that's also not talked about in schools it's not talking about how like, we have weeks to prepare a concert you have three days maybe three days yeah and it's just like if you don't show up and i and this is it's been great for me um as a teacher to show my kids my parts it's like mm -hmm. this is how much i write on my part yeah after mm -hmm. i get to the stage yeah like i know mm -hmm. my part but there, I'm like, oh, I missed this in my prep. I said, if I don't mm -hmm. hear this, I'm not going to come in correctly. Or, hey, mm -hmm. playing with the flute here? I can't hear a flute. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know they were playing. Mm -hmm. So let me, like, let me fit. <laughs> okay, right. I, look, I'm giving the side eye, too. What you mean? My eyes can me. But, you know, I think it's really important to, like, break down this, like, I think this fog of, like, what it is to be in an orchestra and like actually what the real timeline is and like yeah you have it's work it. it's, it's work. work it is work it is work it's not it, it that's the thing that i think i miss the most like shifting between college and fellowship like how how many and then how many folders like with these big orchestras you might have three programs a week so we're talking about um masterworks pop like you got all of that three folders which means you might be learning 20 or plus pieces a week yeah. yeah you know balancing that with being a human being and you know how do you prepare and then how do you actually prepare for these rehearsals mm. you know learning your part is not enough no, i learned that the hard way oh. i learned that a hard way <laughs> you know because it's like i'm counting but then you you might like you might think okay well i'm counting what i see here on my page but you need to know what's happening around because if something goes wrong or just like maybe your internal pulse or something is a little off or anything could happen. Anything. But you should know, okay, well, the I don't know, the violin does this, well, I react off of that. Like, it's a conversation. Yeah. You know, those I will, things. I would tell those students 
and professionals, counting sucks. Mm. I'm so bad at it. And I really, I'm one of those who like will lose count. I'll go from one to 15, like real quick. <laughs> I'll go okay, one. I thought I was the only one. <laughs> I'm telling you, I really like, I focus more on the counting than the plan. I'm like, Oh, Two, right. <laughs> four, the gone, gone, gone by, and the beat is gone and, by, and gone, and I, and I just, I'd be like, yeah, yes, you like, have to. You got to learn how to count, or if you don't know how to count, you better know that music so intimately. Yep, you don't have to know yes, how to count. Yes. Yep, and also for the conductors that are listening, you got to know your scores mm. ten times more because just in yes. case. We have a trumpet player in the back who ain't counting. There better be some type of cue or gesture. I'm telling you all, the students that, that I teach, I'm like, look, the trumpet and the percussion are going to be the two section of instruments that are no longer listening. And they have right. checked out. And that's no shade. I love me some trumpet players. I love me some percussionists. But those are... No, it's shade <laughs> for me. I'm sorry. It's shade. How dare you? I'm, I'm sorry. Like, no, but it is so true. It's true. And we say it too. We say it in rehearsal because I remember we were doing a pop show and they're like, okay, we're just going to skip this piece. And me and the other, Ooh. if you skip this, I will mess it up. So you better Ooh. run through it right now. Ooh. I love it. At least you're honest. Because <laughs> I know we're going to mess it up. <laughs> I love that. Um, so, I, also, and I don't know if you felt this through your fellowships or in your current role as the acting principal. Mm -hmm. Um, how is it, is it different communicating with the maestro or the conductor um, compared to where it was when you were in school mm. and how, like, what is that dialogue? Yeah. Like? How do you approach that dialogue and how do you approach that rela working relationship? Well, I feel like now as acting principal, it's not as different as it was in, in school mm. because it's like, you feel like you are like, how do I put this? Like your colleague, like in, in school, like yeah. that's your teacher, you know, like you might be like, you're my teacher, so I, I can talk to you. When you actually have a role in the orchestra, it's like, well, you're the leader and I'm the leader, so I'm going to talk to you. Yeah. But as a fellow, it's like, okay, I'm going to ask the, I'm going to ask somebody that's actually in the orchestra yeah. because you might feel like you, like you're not really supposed to be addressing him or her. Yeah. I can totally see that. Um, but, you know... It's but can I say one more thing? I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. Yes. But I think if I could go back to my fellowship, especially like in Pittsburgh, because at the end of my fellowship, I had a meeting with Lorna McGee, the principal flutist, and um, Manfred Hanek, like the conductor there. And um, he was so gracious and so sweet and like offered amazing advice. And I'm just like, dang, why didn't I talk to him? Exactly. More like yes. utilize these fellowship programs to talk to people to learn every single thing that you can. I I can't say that I did, and that's something that I regret. But I I that's my advice. Like talk, ask questions, learn. Okay, okay. Because you like the, the, there's a difference between like because we've been talking about this overstepping mm -hmm. versus yep. like, just using the resources that are available to you. Because overstepping is going to the, the, the my and say I think we should play it like this, and you're like oh heck no. Oh, yeah, no, no Heck no. not even when you're a tenured musician. I'm not sure. Yes, yes, no, no. Well, you never so. do that. But like the difference of being like, so. right? But being like, Maestro, I'd love to know a little bit about like just asking general questions or wanting to know a little bit about mm -hmm. like, not not questioning them, but just saying I really want to know more about um curiosity. Your, your, yeah, yeah, your interpretation of this. That is something that I don't think you ever need to ask anyone for permission to do. And I think just knowing the difference between like overstepping versus just using a resource, because right. I'm sure that has that's been a thing for me as well, where later on I like meet someone who I, I would have just like turned my head away from like, don't talk to me, don't look at me. And they're actually amazing. They're like, can I do more for you? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's about breaking that wall. Exactly. You know, Ooh. like, I feel yeah. like the conductor especially for orchestras because y'all might have you know different conductors every two weeks or so or something yeah. so it's like we're only here for business but at the end of the day we are people too exactly. and mm -hmm. I, i'm gonna 
say this as a blanket statement. Now, for the older generation or some of the other girls that are kind of a queens over there, but for like me as a conductor, I love when people come up and say, so what were you thinking? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Because now I'm like, oh, wow, you're invested. Let, let's talk about it. So then in the next rehearsal, you see, you know, you see the vision and now we see the vision together. Yes, that's so important. That's yeah. Beautiful music. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And especially in those fellowship things uh, and the fellowships, you have to milk everything you have. So yes. you know yes, what you never know. Right. It is what they can write as a fellow, especially to especially. get everything out of your experience. Take everything mm -hmm. out. Yes. Never know if that conductor that you spoke to mm -hmm. might be in a job 15 years from now. Who's like, oh, wait, I know Chantanique. I yeah. know her. Like, you know, back 15 years ago, she's she yes. showed up, she did her thing and had the conversation because mm -hmm. she, people will remember. And and, right. and who knows what future holds? Because literally, actually, a funny story about that is like one of the first things I did as the one of the or the fellow for the Seattle Symphony last year was I went on a like artist visit to one of our community partners with Jonathan Hayward, who's the music director. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Baltimore. And I remember- He's awesome, by the way. And if you know anything about Jonathan, Jonathan loves community. He loves educate anything to do with like helping children, especially children from like marginalized communities and like giving like his like knowledge, tutelage, like all of that, he's there. So like I go into this and I'm like a little fellow and I'm just like with our associate conductor and I'm like, Sonny, do you want to sit next to him? I don't want to sit Oh, next Sonny. Him. Hi, Sonny. I love Sonny. I love Sonny. Sonny is the real one. Okay. Like I love, love her. Love me some Sonny. <laughs> but like, I remember Sonny being like, you should sit next to him in the car. And I was like, I don't think I, I don't think like that's my place. I think you need to sit next to him. And she purposely jumped in the Uber and closed the back seat <laughs> so that I had to sit. <laughs> and I was like, and, but it was great because it was an amazing conversation. And he was like, oh my gosh, yeah. I have somebody who's from Georgia. And, and we had this amazing conversation. Yeah. Like it was such a cool experience. And then fast forward to this past summer when I was doing the program at Juilliard with uh, the League of American Orchestras. And we he came, like he came in as a guest speaker but I had to leave the day after or the the day he was supposed to be there. I go to dinner the night before I leave and him and his wife, Millie, hi, Millie, shout out Millie, um, are there. And I go, oh my gosh, like Jonathan, I don't know if you ever, and he was like, Lauren, of course I remember you. And I was, <laughs> yes, it was just one of those moments where I was like, I'm really yes. happy that first of all, Sonny was there to push me to be like, it is your place to be here. Yes. <laughs> have this conversation but then I also like accepted that and was like you're right you're right I want to do that so it's a balance of like having people who are there to empower you to say hey you do deserve to do that do that right but then also for you to believe it yourself and like you spoke about imposter syndrome that's something that mm -hmm. all has faced we like, all yeah having that so to anyone who's listening who you may be in a position right now who you're just like I don't know if I should talk with I don't know if it's in my place I don't know if I should what's the worst thing that could happen? Like really take Great a question. And like, think about what is, do they ignore you? Does, you know, does something actually like have you get reprimanded? Even if you did like, think about if you were to get talked to in that way, is this a place you want to be? Is this a place that is actually supportive of who you are? Yeah. Is there someone like, do you have a Sunny <laughs> who can be there, who can like help support you and say, hey, you actually do belong. You should utilize these resources. Mm -hmm. Those are all the things, and it's nuanced, right? Because every fellowship is different. Every right. conductor is very different. So you just have to like re- it's We're like dealing with personalities here. Yes. Personalities. <laughs> yeah. Personalities, yes. Mm. So, um, oh my gosh, there's just, there's we could go on and on because there's just so much between like, what, what'd you say? I was singing Maui, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Mm. What? He was Wait, you were saying what? Like, <laughs> I was singing Moana because she said we can go on and on. Oh, oh. like every natural phenomenon, the tide, the grass, the ground. I'm so sorry. You are so that's okay. That's all child. right. That's, that's wonderful. Of course, supportive than he is. Oh, you are a whole child. I got you. I hey. like you. I'm here for this. Yeah. This. Okay. But mm -hmm. this has been um, a fabulous <laughs> <laughs> experience <laughs> talking to you and just being able to hear a little bit about you know you as a person and yes. your just your journey to where you are and it's I mean I'm just so happy to hear and to see you now in this position you are in with Memphis and to see all the amazing things that you're going to be doing there with them 
um, as well as all the things you are, already have done. So we're just happy to have shared this experience with our audience. Audience, go follow Shantanique. Shantanique, where can we follow you? Yes. What are your socials? How can we get in touch with you? You can follow me on Instagram at smoreflute, S-M-O-O-R-E-F-L-U-T-E. Um, that's the best bet. Or I have a flute page called at for flutes only. Um, it's, it's exactly how it sounds. No weird spelling. I don't think. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to get back on the social media. You know, it's, it's quite Thank a you. lot. Yeah, it is a lot. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. it can be. a lot. But I would love to connect with anybody. If, and if you have questions about the fellowship programs or Sphinx, especially, because I mean, a lot of a lot of my most recent opportunities, like subbing with Seattle, subbing with National Symphony, subbing with where else have I been? A lot of different places yeah. has come through the that SOPA, the Sphinx Orchestral Partner Audition. So if you have any questions about that, I would love to answer and be there for you. Well, we're Thank just you. so happy to now have you as a part of the Relative Pitch Village. As we always like to say, you are now with us and we will be there for you along all, your entire journey from here on out and we're just so thankful that we got to spend today with you yes thank you so much for having me it's been a blast i was nervous y'all i was nervous <laughs> I was like, ah. but this was so much fun thank you so much for having me thank you thank you to you audience uh, we will catch you as uh, probably not unfortunately in this setting oh this right we'll be back in the zoom <laughs> land but That's we'll be back regardless so we'll catch y'all next week next week Bye. see ya